Psalms 132, a song of degree. Now, this is a remarkable psalm. It's going to be about the millennium and about the promises made to David. And there are some that suggest that this was written by Nathan, the prophet. And uh, Lord, remember David and his. So it's not David writing, because he wouldn't say his afflictions. Look at all the troubles David's in. Lord, don't forget him. <laughs> you know, it'd be great if we all had somebody that prayed like that for you. Somewhere someone is praying for you. You may not even know. We don't know who wrote this song. This song. Now I'm going to assume that every person pretty much has somewhere in the world someone is praying. We need that. Lord, remember David and all his lectures. Look at the trouble, pain, and sorrow. How he, David, sweared unto the Lord. And vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. David made an oath. Second Samuel 7 is when David talks about what we're looking at. And to Nathan. David said, surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house. Oh. David called the tabernacle his house too. Not just the tabernacle where the Lord dwelt, but he called his own house a tabernacle. Shall we take that reference and go running over to the book of Acts when it says that the church met in this house, the church met in their house, and the church that met in thy house? Shall we run the cross reference? The church today is not a building. And it's remarkable to have Baptist churches named temple. Well, it's not the temple. The building is not the temple. The people. Nor go up unto my bed. I will not give sleep of my eyes or slumber to my eyelids. Uh, that's kind of... That's kind of figure of David because you, you know you need air air is a priority you, you don't have air you're not going to live long I only think it's minutes next you need water I forget with weeks days with weeks without water and then you need food I believe that's weak I mean there have been people who fasted 40 days and and die soon afterwards. You also need sleep. A person that is continually deprived of sleep has the threat of death. To be insomniac can be a serious medical condition. But David, to the writer of the song, I'm not taking care of any business as a king until we read, it, read the next verse. I am not taking care of any business. I am not going to rest in the matter until I find but a place for the Lord and a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Now that's funny because David does find a place. How does he find the place? He sends Joab to go number the people. And Joab's like, David, there, there's, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of place. There's a lot of people. And Joab goes about numbering the people angrily. And he doesn't even do the full job. And the Lord comes back. I forget. Maybe Nathan. But comes back to the prophet. He says, David. And the Bible says that God provoked David to number Israel, and the devil provoked David to number Israel. God was angry with Israel, not David. 
And God said to David, you got three choices. Be chasing your enemies, sword of the Lord, the angel of the Lord. Or oh, I think the other one was famine. David says, let me now fall in the hands of the, of the Lord. Let me not fall in the hands of the Lord, for the Lord is merciful. So God sent the, the, the angel of the Lord with, with, the, with the sword. And people start killing, being killed in Jerusalem. They're dropping dead. And the Lord said, well, you know what? I, 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 I repent. Eh? Too much. He might have got to the point where he killed all the people that sinned. And maybe he's coming up to the point those that didn't sin. He says, David, he goes, yes, I want you to go to the, the threshing floor of Anon. Anon. I want you to go make me an offering there. David looks up. He sees the angel with a sword. Anon looks up. He sees the angel with a sword. David approaches Anon. He says, I, I, I'm going to offer it right here in this threshing floor. I'm going to offer it. A sacrifice of the Lord. And Anna says, here, take it. No, David's like, uh-uh. If I'm going to offer anything to the Lord, I'm paying for it. And David purchased, and it's recorded in the Bible in two places, the purchase deed of that property that we're talking about right now. That dumb of the rock does not belong there according to the King James Bible. The title deed's in the Bible. Heaven and earth will pass away, Jesus said, but my word shall not pass away. Forever is recorded, and even when the heavens and earth and all vanish and go fly away with fervent heat, Peter said, there's still that title deed belonged to David, and this is what we're looking at right now. The Lord found a place and sent David. And David purchased where he got all the materials and Solomon built the temple on that spot. Lo, we heard of it in Ephra. That's Bethlehem. That's where David come from. That's David's hometown, where Jesus was born. We found it out in the fields of the wood. The news got all around. You won't believe what David did. He purchased. <coughs> we have a capital. We have a capital of a capital where there are now going to be plans to build that place for God. We will go into his, God's tabernacles. Plural. You see the S. I hope you see the S. You know, they say that they moved the ark into Solomon's temple, but they never ever said that that tabernacle that David had, the curtains, it never said they got rid of that. Now within time, if it was destroyed, as soon when Babylon came, tabernacle, maybe all the, the courts, the rooms, we will worship at his footstool. God's footstool. What's that in the Bible? That's Mother Earth. You gotta love your mother. You gotta protect your mother. God says, I put my feet up on there. He sits in heaven and says, I just put my feet on the earth. That's what God thinks of Mother Earth. It's a place to put my feet. And all those that love Mother Earth and worship Mother Earth are at the feet of God. Whoa. I'm not at the feet of God. The Bible says, I believe it's Hebrews, I am in the presence of God. I am seated in holy places. I, my body hasn't made it yet. My soul hasn't. But I am seated in heavenly places. But I go boldly into the throne of grace. This world is not my home, though many Christians have it to be. Many Christians are established at the feet of Jesus because they love the world, they love the earth, and they love everything else. Man, I am in heavenly places. That's what God thinks of this earth. One day he's going to get his foot and turn the earth into a football. Boing! Arise! Guess what that is? When you hear the Bible, the, the Lord arise, God arise. 
That's Jesus Christ, Second Advent, Jehovah Witness, Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And they say, Jesus is not, I've heard them, Jesus is not God. And you're not smart, you're a moron. Yes, I've told him that. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest. And there's much rest spoken about in Hebrews. Talking to the Israel people, to the Jewish people, to the Hebrews people. The rest in the land. It's not church age doctrine. I believe Israel is going to get the new earth. Revelation 21 and 22. Permanent rest. Thou, God, and the ark of thy strength. Well, the ark's right there. And it will be moved into Solomon's temple. But John tells us the ark is in glory today. I don't care what Hollywood and Mr. Ford and all that do. The Nazis don't have the ark. I didn't watch the movie. I read about it. I didn't read the book. I read, you know, the description. That ark is in heaven in glory. Let thy priests, this is millennial, be clothed with righteousness. That can't be today in the church age. There are no priests. Or there are priests, but we don't know who they are. Are the priests righteous in the time of David? Solomon's got to scold them out during his reign. There's a time that some of the priests went for Solomon's brother there, I forget what his name is, with Joab and all of them to upset the authority of Solomon and David. There were priests in the time of Jesus that rejected the Messiah. But we're all looking forward to Calvary. Let thy saints shout for joy. Let me ask you a question. The Catholic Church says saints are dead. And once they die, if they've done some kind of miracle, this is Catholic Church, I was Catholic, they can, they can be claimed a sainthood. How does a saint shout for joy if he's dead? Hey, don't bury me, I'm alive! So again, Jehovah Witnesses have it wrong, the Catholics have it wrong, and you're all angry with me because I kicked the religions and I kick the church, and I kick Baptist with the word of God. Be angry with God, don't be angry with me. Saints in the Catholic Church are dead people. Saints in the Bible are dead and alive. I am a saint, and I have no halo around my head. Many Christians would love to put a rope around my head. For thy servant David's sake, so it's not David. Turn not away the face of thy anointed. David's anointed the king. I'm trying to think. I think he was anointed twice. Once he was anointed amongst his brethren, I think when he finally became king, he was anointed again. Solomon was anointed twice. Solomon was not anointed when David said, hey, they're not the kingdom. You are. And then he's anointed before the people twice. Jesus Christ, the Christ, comes to the first advent. Jesus Christ. Christ means anointed. He's coming back to be the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's going to be anointed again. Why don't you know your Bible? The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He, God, will not turn from it. God's never going to tell David, oh, sorry, I can't do it. Sorry, David. Oh, you know, David had my fingers crossed. When Gabriel came to Mary, she told, he told, he told Mary, he says, the baby that's going to be born of you, you're going to call him Jesus. He shall save his people from their sin. And he's going to sit on his father's throne, David. But God's all finished with Israel. Another blunt. He will not turn from it of the fruit of his body. That will be Jesus. Will I sit upon thy throne? There's Jesus. Check out Luke chapter 1. Gabriel talking to Mary. 
Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Pilate wrote upon the, the thing above Jesus' head. This is this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And the Jews got up to say he said. Pilate said, I've written what I've written. He was convinced. If thy children will keep my covenant, and they don't, and my testimony, and they don't, that I shall teach them, and he does, their children shall also sit upon the throne forevermore. The throne is gone in Jeremiah's time. Oh, her, 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 write this man, Jeconiah, childless. That's the reason for the virgin birth. During Jeremiah's time of Jeconiah, God says, that I am done. I am finished. Well, Lord, how are you going to have the kingdom of David keep that promise? I'm going to do a miracle. A, a virgin shall conceive a seed. The virgin was of David, of David's seed. The man that would adopt Jesus, that would marry that virgin, is of David. For the Lord has chosen Zion... That's the place where David bought. He is desirant for his habitation. Right now it's the dumb of the rock. Dumb, the dump, dump. That dumb of the rock is going to go bye-bye one day. Our rock is Jesus. Their rock. This is my rest. And you always see that in Hebrews. Here, Zion, will I dwell. Jesus. I mean, when Solomon builds that temple and sets it up, that's only temporary. Babylon comes in and destroys it all. And then they set it back up in 70 AD. Titus comes and sacks it. I don't think God's going to dwell in the temple in, in Jerusalem when, <coughs> when the Antichrist is there. No. For I have desired it. And he kept telling throughout the, with the law, a place where I shall put my name, a place where I shall put my name, of the tribes of Israel where I shall put my name. I will abundantly bless, make happy, her provision, Zion, Jerusalem, everything she needs. That's millennial. I will satisfy her poor with bread. The curse is removed off the earth and man to, the gardens are overflowing. The grapes don't turn into alcohol. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. That's not to... And do you think you know what the Catholic priests do with that one? Is the Catholic Church sitting on Zion? Be careful. You see, as a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, we're going to take a route over to the Holy City and visit Jerusalem. And we're going to pay the Arabs, and we're going to pay the Catholics to tell us a bunch of lies. This is what Jesus, and this is where, that's a bunch of lies. The Catholic priests are over there right now. The Catholic Church is over there right now in Jerusalem. Along with the Arabs. All of them against Israel. The Catholic Church, I will clothe my priests with salvation. You mean the ones who have been sleeping in, in fornicating with the altar boys? You mean the ones who have uh, have adulterous relationships with the nuns? You do you you don't believe that crap that they're given to celibacy. <gasps> that's the priest of Levi that's gonna be set up. The tribe of Levi is mentioned of the 144,000, and there are priests in the temple before the Lord Jesus Christ. And her saints, those are alive, shall shout aloud for joy. Kind of hard if you're dead. So you see the two classes of people in verse 16 for the, for the Catholic? You got the priests. And you got those who've died and done miracles or something like that. And... It's the hierarchy of the Catholic Church, verse 16, which is a bunch of bunk. When somebody important dies in the Catholic Church, they, they examine their life and, oh, look, at that could be a miracle, and then they make them a saint. 
It'd be a miracle if they're in heaven. There will I, God, make the horn of David to bud. And the horn is a strength. It's the animal strength. It's also the vessel used to carry the, the anointing oil. God, I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. There's a light. His enemy, David's enemy, will I clothe with shame. The United Nations, the Arabians, the Nazis, all the people that curse Israel, there's your shame. There's the goat when Jesus Christ comes back. The Bible said that when, when they see Jesus coming, they're going to take their golds and their idols and all their crap, and they're going to throw it to the holes and to the bats and say, please protect us from the one that's coming. I know you don't like crap. But upon himself, David, shall his crown flourish, and that crown flourishes through Jesus Christ. Go see Gabriel. Hey, let's, you know what? I don't believe you're going to go look it up. Let's go Luke. I don't trust you go look it up. You're lazy. Don't talk to me like that. Luke chapter 128. You are. You won't look it up. Luke chapter 128. And the angel, would be Gabriel, came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. And the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now go check that out with Judges 5.24 where J.L. got a better blessing than Mary did. Go check that out. You probably won't, but I'm telling you Judges 5.24, J.L. See, many people, you tell them to go check up the scriptures and they don't check the scriptures. <laughs> when I tell you to go check the scriptures and you don't check out the scriptures, Guess who's going to be held accountable to the judgment seat of Christ? And when she, Mary, saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son. Well, 50-50. Unless you live 20. 2020 where you have all kinds of but there's only two genders in the Bible and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and for his kingdom there shall be no end and Mary said unto the angel, Well, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? I'm a virgin. Mr. Angel, it's impossible for me to have a baby. Angel answered, Senator, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest God shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, the baby in the womb, called the thing, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. There it is. When God cursed out Kaniah, you've got to have a virgin conceived because there could be nobody of Kaniah anymore. And Kaniah's name is removed from Matthew chapter 1. 